Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a very quick run through of how I processed uh, the M31 Andromeda Galaxy to uh, from starting off looking like this to this. So I'll be running through my one shot color workflow process. This image was taken uh, using the Red Cat 51 telescope, the ASI 183MC Pro one shot color camera and there's about 17 hours worth of integration time. Before I get into this video, I just wanted to say for those of you that watch uh, the video all the way through and stick with it to the end, there are a couple of extra things I just let you know about right at the end of the video. Don't just skip to the end because where's the enjoyment in that? Yeah, if you want some bonus features of this video, then uh, watch it all the way through. So uh, first things first, we're just gonna jump into photometric color calibration and background neutralization. Drag that triangle on there. Because this image was um, integrated and stacked using PixInsight, it's retained all of the, the location information taken from the imaging process and the ASI Air device. That means that I can actually use this photometric color calibration tool because the image is already plate solved and has that location information. So that's nice and quick. If you uh, wanted to do this for yourself and you don't have that information, you can go up to Script, Image Analysis and Image Solver. You put in the information in terms of the uh, when you took it, uh, focal length of the telescope, pixel size, target, etc. And then that should provide you with the same information that you can then use photometric color calibration. I'm now going to uh, do a dynamic crop on this image just to get rid of the bits around the edges where uh, we've got uh, when I was capturing the image, I was using dithering, so there's going to be parts of the image that have extra noise around the edges. The next step is to do a dynamic background extraction using a visible dark CA's um, approach of tolerance set to 2, shadow relaxation to 6, sample radius to 150, hit resize all, generate, and then we just remove all of the sample boxes from the middle of the image. Naturally, whenever you're doing this, you need to make sure that none of the sample boxes are actually over any kind of galaxy or nebula, because you don't want it to remove that information because that's what you want to keep in your image. Uh, I'm also going to be removing these ones just on the corners here, because you've got a bit of, uh, a bit of the galaxy on the edges there as well, so we just need to Kind of allow it to keep that as much as possible. I'm going to drag this triangle on here to keep the subtraction information and we're going to do a division first to remove any vignetting and then once we've done that we can then close that down, open up this process and do the subtraction by clicking on the tick for that as well. So we've done all of our background extraction, all of our color calibration and you've got this image. We're now ready to uh, do Blur Exterminator, set Stellar and Non-Stellar, drag that on there. So this is going to be doing some AI-based deconvolution of the image. It's going to be taking uh, that star information and deconvoluting the stars, and because I've selected Non-Stellar, then Stellar, it's going to do some deconvolution based on what it's calculated for the stars. It's going to do that on the non-stellar information as well. So that's that part done. Now do noise exterminator. I'm just going to increase the level of detail up to about 0.35 and drag that on there. So these RC Astro tools, uh, they do cost uh, money, but they work very well. And I'll just show you the difference here. So you can see this is after and this is before. There's a significant amount of noise there and that's now gone. So uh, it is well worth the money. We've got a linear image at the moment. We just need to create a non-linear image. So we're going to run histogram transformation, select the image there, and then we're going to drag the bottom slider such that we start to stretch the image and you can see the histogram on the top moving to the right. We want to see what's going on as well. We can run the preview and just turn off the screen stretching by clicking that red button there. So you want to apply this a few times. Each time you want to apply it, uh, hit the square, then reset the stretch so that you can run the stretch again. You want to kind of move it so that it's about that location each time. Hit the square. Um, you don't want to try and do it all in one go because you're just going to potentially end up overcooking things. That's looking quite nice. Hit the square there. So again, we don't want to overcook this too much because um, also what, what we want to do is not end up with stars that are too bloated. So we want to remove those stars, process the image in a minute. Yeah, let's just hit square there, I'm happy with that. Close that down, close that down. 
so we can now do star exterminator. So we've got a non-linear image now. Make sure unscreen stars is checked. Drag the triangle on and we can remove the stars. If you don't have star exterminator you can use starnet plus plus which comes with PixInsight as well. Um, but I like using this tool. The reason for selecting unscreen stars is to make sure that yep, the stars come off, they're removed from, from that image and then when actually we put them back in at a later point um, they'll retain the colour that they should have. Just minimise the stars, we don't need that for now. Now I've got to focus on this. So the other reason for removing the stars is when you're doing things like the uh, curves transformation and things, you'll start to you might want to stretch this a bit further. In doing that, you can end up with making your stars more stretched as well, and then you'll end up with larger stars than you actually want. Before we do anything else, we're going to extract the uh, luminance layer by clicking on this button at the top there. That's going to give us uh, a nice luminance layer that we can then reapply to the image to create an LRGB image by going to all processes, rolling down, finding LRGB combination, deselect everything there, tick that, we're going to set the saturation to 0 0.250 and then drag the triangle onto the RGB image to apply the luminance information. So that's all done there. We can get rid of that luminance file as well. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to run SCNR, set it to about 80% and drag that triangle onto there to remove any kind of green that we might, green hint that you, we've got in that image. So if you can see there, zooming in again, if we undo that, can see there's definitely a green hint to that image so SCNR will will remove that for us. Next step is uh, HDR. I'm going to set this to number of layers 8, uh, turn D-ringing on and drag that on there. Uh, the reason for number of 8 layers is because that that seems to give me the effect that I'm after. Uh, if you end up with 6 or 7 it kind of overcooks the HDR effect a little bit too much um, but this is all down to personal preference if you like that do that, it's your image. But yeah, I, I didn't want that, so that's why I've removed that. So I'm quite happy with the way that's looking now. That's looking really good. What we can now do is um, start running some uh, curves transformation to, to basically sort of, yeah, pull out a bit more detail, stretch it a little bit, and add some uh, saturation boost and things like that. This can be a really sort of time consuming thing. I'm gonna quickly rush through this, but yeah, definitely don't rush this with your own images. It's, it's very important to get the best that you can out of your images. Hit the square there. I'm now gonna sort of boost the saturation. There's two different ways that you can boost the saturation in your images. Um, you can do it this way using saturation. There's also a, a C item down here, which is called CEI C component. Um, and this is also another way of boosting the saturation. It's worth worth bearing these in mind as well. There's it sort of being massively overcooked. Not going to be doing that. I'll probably keep it about there, I'd say. So the other thing that's worth uh, trying on here is color saturation. So this gives you the, the, the benefit of being able to selectively boost the saturation in particular areas. So it's very subtle, it seems, but you can... Um, yeah, you can boost like the, the reds and the yellows, which will appear mostly on the Andromeda galaxy. You can also boost the blues as well, because there's lots of blue areas around the edges of the galaxy that are worth, worth seeing if you can kind of pull out the detail there as well. So that's worth, worth playing about with. I think I'm going to keep that quite like that, that curve. So I'm going to hit apply there. And that's that part done. Uh, we want to uh, try local histogram function or equalization here. And the benefit of this is it just can give you some, <laughs> that looks terrible, but when you dial it down a bit, you can actually sort of boost some of the local contrast areas, which looks can look quite nice as well. So we're just gonna play about with this and see what, see what we get and see what we like. I yeah, quite like that with all of the, uh, the dark dust lanes and things, so I'm gonna hit square there to apply that. So that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing to that part of the image. Now we're just going to be tweaking the stars a bit, not massively, but um, just going to boost the saturation of the stars. It'll bring it up to about that level and apply that to the stars three times. I tend to find that sort of doing that three times brings out a bit more of the colour of the stars and uh, yeah, it tends to work quite well for me. So I'm gonna now use these, um, these three pixel math methods as one create starless, which all it's doing is just renaming the images. 
create a star image, so I've got stars and starless, and then I can use this pixel math script to add the stars and the starless back in using this um, this particular pixel math formula. So a nice and quick um, way of creating that final image. So here we go, there is the uh, the final image. So for those of you that uh, watched this through to the end of the video, um, if you would like to use uh, this image data to be able to follow through the whole thing, then I've put a link to that in the description. Uh, for those of you that looked in the description beforehand, then you might have already known that, but I thought it would be helpful for you to, uh, to be able to follow along exactly with this particular image, and you can see how that works, and then you can compare that to any images that you have. Uh, I did run this through this video very quickly. The idea was to provide a very quick overview of how I actually process my images. If you want me to, to sort of provide a, um, a longer, more detailed video, um, if you find that useful, then please put something in the uh, in the comments. Let me know whether you prefer uh, a quick overview or a more detailed approach. Uh, then I'll be able to tailor my videos uh, to best suit uh, my subscribers. Before we get to the uh, final bonus part of this video, I just wanted to say thank you very much for everybody who's subscribed to this channel. Uh, I've gone past the 2K mark now, which is absolutely fantastic. I can't believe that's happened. Uh, I've also introduced uh, YouTube memberships as well, so if you're able to and you want to uh, support the channel further, uh, then please look at the link in the description below. Uh, so now on to the final bonus part of this video. So one final thing I thought about just before doing this was actually to uh, use morphological transformation on the actual stars themselves. So if we take that star image, go down to uh, morphology, morphological transformation, um, reduce the intensity to about 0.85, select star size 9, so if you need to hit that, hit that button there, and then apply that onto the actual stars themselves, and then if we then do merge stars again, hit the square, we end up with this image, which actually I think looks really, really nice. Uh, not as many stars in there, but actually I think the, the way those stars look, the overall image, I think it has a very ethereal type view to it so uh, yeah let me know in the uh, comments whether you prefer this image or this image so i'll uh, leave it at that i hope you found this useful uh, thank you for watching and clear skies mm -hmm.